Hello and welcome back Super Mums. In today's video, we're speaking to Jo Ann James, who works full time as a stay at home mum. We're gonna be finding out why Jo picked this path, her little bit about her ups and downs through the journey and what the future holds for her as a super mum. So hello Jo, thank you for coming on. Hello, you're very welcome. Um, so can you introduce us to you as a mum outside like the working world, literally what matters to you as a mum and, and uh, a little bit about your small human? Okay, so, um, well, I've had children uh, later in life than most because uh, I'm actually 49 years old. So, and I'm mum to Constance, who is nearly 14 months old. So obviously, um, she was a very much wanted child because I'd always wanted children, thought I may not have them, but she's my little miracle. We, we love our little miracles. I can, yeah, I, um, I know a bit about your backstory, which we won't go into today, but maybe we can do a future video on that one. Um, and it's that, that want to be a mum. Um, I've been writing a speech earlier on today and I realised it was 15 years. I actually felt like I was waiting for 15 years. I was age 15 when I decided I was going to be a mum. Um, yeah. And age 16 when I was given my first medical reason why I couldn't have kids. <laughs> a slap in the face there, isn't it? It's um... devastating. Yeah. Um, so can you tell us a bit about what your work life, use this like work life, was like before you had your small? Yes, so I was a program manager in IT and I used to implement um, insurance systems in the financial services sector and this involved being on client site a fair amount. So I've travelled the world globally and to name a few, I've been working in uh, Buenos Aires in Argentina, worked in Dubai, uh, I had a two year stint in Copenhagen. So. I wasn't home much, didn't really have the opportunity, thought I would, you know, was I going to meet the person to settle down with? Luckily that's happened now, so met him at work actually, so five years ago. Aww. Well congratulations. Um, I like a good how we met story, but again, <laughs> otherwise <laughs> these videos end up really, really long if I get into everything I want to know. Yeah. Um, Tell us what your work, this is where the, that bit comes in well, your work life looks like now, because I suppose having a child is very much work, but it's also not work. <laughs> yeah, so completely different. Obviously going to all these different um, classes with the baby. So starting off with like baby massage and baby yoga, and then moving on to baby sensory. It's a much different environment. And the first time that you're sat there singing a silly song, you're thinking, hang on, I used to be a uh, professional. <laughs> and now I'm sitting here silly, singing silly songs, doing sign language. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's just amazing. It's just such a rewarding world and, you know, better than I ever imagined it would be. Just taking it, just seeing her develop um, and grow. It's just amazing. And what made you choose this path? Was it very much a conscious decision? Did you automatically know? Did you have to do a pros and cons list? Like what, what was sort of your process to get to this? Or was there no process? Was it just that that's it, I'm done, I'm mum? Yeah, it's, it's that's it, I'm done, I'm mum. So I started work when I was 17. You know, this pregnancy, I was coming into, I think I was 47, nearly 48. And after 30 years working, built my career, done that. Now I want to do something else. And lucky that I had that choice because if I'd have been having my children in my twenties or thirties, I wouldn't have had that choice and I would have been going back to work. Um, so I'm just very lucky that I don't, I don't have to do that and that I can, you know, enjoy the time I have with Constance in our early years. So what's been the biggest benefit or a couple of sort of big benefits that you found with being a full-time stay-at-home mum and having that constant time with her? I think it, most, the majority is to see her developing because that's just amazing. 
And I didn't realise until I had a child how quickly they develop. You know, their little personality comes out, they start walking, they start talking. You know, you, she'll give you a round of applause if she thinks you've done something well. I mean, it's, it's just amazing. And I mean, and I suppose it's not having that rigid, uh, you know, get up, get on the train, go to work or go to the airport. You know, now I don't have to worry about that. I can just do what I want. And if I want to go meet girls for coffee or I want to meet a friend for lunch, I do that. And obviously I take Constance too, because they all want to see her. <laughs> I suppose it gives you a glimpse into what life would be like if we didn't have such thing as money, if money didn't exist. Yeah. And we all had this like freedom of time yeah. Well, to, to an extent, because at some point they yell at us for food, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is that little bit of rigidity, obviously, in the planning around the nap times and feeding and nappy changing and sleeping and everything. But, you know, Constance very much comes along with me where I go. And uh, I haven't stopped going on holidays and or going out in the evening. You know, she comes too, so. So I suppose that, that seems to be one of the, the big worries is the loneliness factor you've sort of thrown yourself into going out to classes do you sometimes have to push yourself to go to things you think actually i don't i, don't, yeah. I can't handle another wind of bobbing up <laughs> yeah i do i mean it's like um probably swimming that's the one that now she's getting older and she's getting more mobile it gets, it gets harder and harder when you get in the changing room and you're trying to get her changed get yourself changed and you just think oh it's a big effort but I know how much she enjoys swimming, so yeah, it's worth I, it. I go in my costume, so the getting changed when we get there is quite easy. I just get her ready, but it's at the end. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm like, Mummy is naked, you can't run out of the door yet. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't, this isn't how it works. <laughs> no, it, it does make you realise how different life is when you're doing things on your own and you've got this other little person that's completely reliant on you and before you're so used to doing it all and and now you you know you've got someone else to consider so. i am um, i'm a big fan of time blocking and in the the first month theme was was saving time and i did a whole video about time blocking but i do these things called mum buffers around my time blocking so depending yeah. on the event, there'll be somewhere between 15 minutes and an hour of mum buffer, which allows for her not being gamed for whatever it is I'm trying to do, or not getting out the door, or a nappy explosion just as we're trying to leave. They're my, yeah, they're my mum buffers. So I'll say <laughs> to people that I'll, I'll meet you at 12-ish. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I've, never, I've never left the house on time since I've had Constance. I'm being in project management and always being, you know, very, risk averse and all of this when pro running my projects it's a totally different ball game when you're planning uh, your yeah. day because you, you you've got to allow for that nappy explosion before you leave the house to get there on time so yeah i know i think pre pre baby i had my um, quite old fashioned so someone could be late without letting me know and i wouldn't get mad if it was up to five minutes if they let me know they got up to 10 minutes if they have a child, they now get 45 minutes and they don't yeah. have to tell me. They can just be 45 minutes late. Yeah. Ideally, I like to know where they are so that I haven't, something's not wrong. Yeah. But they, the, yeah, it's gone from five minutes to 45. <laughs> Mum buffer. <laughs> I like, I'm liking the terminology. <laughs> so what would you think are the downsides that you found to, to being full-time stay at home mum? I'd like to say there isn't really any, just because it's such a contrast from my working life. Mm. And I don't miss my working life at all. And do you, do you think that's because you had quite, you've had a longer working life before? I coming, think so, yeah. I think I've had a longer working life. I've always wanted children. I've seen all my friends have theirs and I've carried on working and living abroad. And they all think, thought I had an amazing life and I always wanted to be doing what they were doing and now I'm doing it so yeah I don't I'm not looking back it's like it's all about looking forward now mm. I mean we're very lucky in the UK and um, and I was reminded this I was reading a blog the other day about Americans 
maternity leave and I watched a documentary and she's like, yeah, I got my, my boss promised me I could have six weeks. And then at four weeks, she's like, no, you need to come back to work. We need you on this project. And I was like, six weeks? I was still trying to master how to get my boob and the kid in the same place at six weeks. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure I was still in tenor incontinence pants with maternity liners at six weeks. There was no way I could have put a suit on and got my butt in a boardroom. Like, the idea is, is crazy. And, and it seems um, a lot of people are taking about, about the year mark in the UK. And, yeah. and still, there's still this struggle with the support of going back to work, which we're going to touch on more in, in another video with a lady. But I just look at some of the other countries and I know at the moment on Superman, we're about a, a sort of, we've got a few odd random other countries, but we're pretty much a 50-50 split between UK and American viewers. And I just, I really, really feel for, for the American side when they've got to go back to work how sort of little time they get to get this connection. And, I think it's and a mindset, because they have to. It's the same as anyone, if they haven't got a choice, then they, yeah. they, they go back to work, you know, almost immediately or as soon as they can. You're in that mindset, you know that's what's going to happen. So you just you know, get on with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've watched it with the NCT girls and they're all of them are strong women and they've all managed to, you know, get themselves back to work now with sorting nurseries out and everything and I've got nothing but admiration for them all doing it and I know they're probably all thinking oh Joe what she's so lucky she's not having to go back to work um yeah. which is true um and like I said I think I think I I would find it hard because I would uh I'd miss what I've got now and uh, to replace it with my working life again it'd be like oh no <laughs> couldn't face it couldn't face it i i got rid of i used to have my own studio that was about i think door to door was an hour commute it was a comfortable hour commute on an overground train which in london is is a luxury to be overground and have wi-fi the whole trip although i know loads of cheese have wi-fi now but could never manage that um and uh, because of the route, I pretty much always got a seat occasionally if i came back at the wrong time i might have to wait a couple of stops to get a seat but for, for London, I had a good commute. I said, anyways, that was two hours a day I wouldn't have with my with my child. Yeah. But I could claim back. I could work closer to home. I get paid a lot less than when I worked in central London, but I could work closer to home. And to be honest, it's worth. I'm, um, that's with my, my PT side of things. I'm working for 40%. Yeah. Exactly 40% of what I used to earn in central London. Um, maybe my overheads are slightly different, but they're not 60% it's worth of difference. But I gain those two hours every day, and that for me is priceless. Yeah. Uh, absolutely priceless. I agree. And um, so you're obviously loving it. It's really settled well with you. You can't see sort of the, the stereotypical work coming back into your life. But where do you see yourself in sort of five years? Have you got any goals for in the next five years? Is there anything? that you've kind of sort of set your your mind to um, besides the sort of mum side of things? Yeah, um, I'm not the sort of person to sit around. So when Constance starts going off doing her own things, school and things like that, I'm going to need something to occupy me. I'm not going to go back to IT and project management because I didn't really enjoy it. it paid well, travelled a lot, but no. So it would be it would be something much more rewarding. So something that I will enjoy doing, and maybe something that gives back to the community. And I'd consider it to be voluntary work, not necessarily paid work, or certainly a lot lower paid work. Just because I don't feel I've had that job where I could come home at the end of the day and feel satisfied with what I'd achieved. Um, you know, it's not like other professions. Just in project management, it's just problems and complaining most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds a bit like being a teacher in this current day and age as well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not like I've saved a life when you come home from your day at the hospital or anything like that. So it'd be nice to do something that, you know, gives back to the community and helps others. 
one of my favorite phrases sparks joy sparks joy <laughs> Yeah. Life should be about every day sparking joy one way or the other. Yeah, agreed. And and anything sort of in the ten years, I don't it suddenly seems like a million miles away and that they'll be ten, eleven years old then. Crazy. Yeah, and I mean I'll put, I'll be, you know, I'd be at retirement age anyway by then. So <laughs> I'll be looking at, you know, getting that little house down on the south coast with the sea view. Yeah, n nothing, nothing really other than that, and just you know enjoying her growing up and yeah, being yeah, able, able to have all those mummy moments. Like you said it is, it, it is a luxury. It's a luxury not kind of afforded to everyone. But I think when you are in a position to to be a stay-at-home mum, you then get. One, the guilt that not everyone can do that, or you're worried that uh, what other people are gonna think about you for doing it. Um, I suppose that's probably a bit easier for you because you're like, I worked for a long time. Yeah, and I mean, I worked really hard to get my child. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Yeah. I mean, I had a life plan, but that never worked out. So I was, you know, get married at 24, have my first baby at 26, my next one at 28, you know, carry on working and then they'll you know they'd be going to school and well none of that happened <laughs> so yeah it's a it's a lot easier to make that decision in in at my age you know and there's a lot of women that would like oh my god I wouldn't want to have my children at that age you know but you know women are having their children later in life I haven't come across any um backlash for being an older mum at all um you know, all the all the girls that I know, obviously, that everyone's younger than me, um, and they all just say, "Oh no, Joe, you don't you don't look your age, don't act my age." You don't. I was shocked when we met. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't have. I thought you were the same for sort the of same catchment as me, and I'm early early thirties. I'm yeah. I'm pretty young for the era. I was the youngest in my NCT, but only by a couple of years. But a yeah. friend of mine, she would have been, I say, like twenty six. Um, and she's same same sort of area, did her NCT, and she was dramatically younger than everyone else. Um, yeah. And it's quite, I don't know if that's a London thing or a proximity to London or bigger cities that, that the ages, people are having their careers first. Um, and whether it's that we don't get around to finding our partners or we want to have our careers or, or that kind of yeah, that I shit. Think, you know, marriages don't work out and then new relationships and, Oh, that was so. me, yeah. I'd, I'd said, I had said I wanted to be married by 25 and children before 35, which I did do. There was just a divorce in the middle. <laughs> um, clearly marrying, unless you're really, really sure and it magically works out, marrying that young doesn't tend to go well because you don't know who you are. No. Um, and how can you give all yourself to another person if you don't actually know who you're giving? No, exactly. Uh, it's a bit crazy. And so, what would be your top tip for people when they're choosing if this is going to be the right path for them? What What do you think, now you're in the mix of it, what do they really need to consider to work out if this is going to be the right, right sort of path for them? I mean, obviously everybody's got different circumstances. My top tip would just be go with your gut, do what you feel is right for you. Um, and definitely give yourself some time with your baby in the early, you know, weeks, months, before you make that definitive decision. I mean, most women, they go on their maternity leave. Like probably when the year's up, there are probably a few that go, well, actually, I'm not gonna go back. Mm. And there's a few that wish they could just not go back, you know? And if you're in that circumstance and you, you have that opportunity to, to not go back and spend those first few years before your child goes to school, then, you know, I'd highly recommend it, but again, it is a luxury and I'm very lucky to find myself in that position but it is more because I've had my baby so later in life than most. Giving you that amazing opportunity. Indeed, yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for coming on and, and giving up, I would say giving up some of your life for me and for our lovely audience. 
Um, I hope everyone um, at home has found this helpful and I will link your Instagram down below in the description. Um, okay. As always, all our contact details and everything are down below. Uh, it's an amazing way to get in touch. And if anyone's got any questions for Joe, then do shoot them at me over on the, the Supermum Society website, supermumsociety.com, um, and I can ping them over to Joe, or they can come and stalk you over on Instagram um, and send you a message if they've got any questions for you. That would be amazing. Yeah, uh, I just so, and informative. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, so to all the mums at home, um, I look forward to connecting with you on this amazing journey through motherhood. And remember that being a super mum is all about being the mum that you want to be. I'll see you soon. Remember, don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications to never miss out on a video again.